morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this All Saints Day. We are a flock gathered and held together by no physical boundary, no fence, no sheepdog, no church building. We are held together by faith and hope and love. Remember that no matter where you are on your spiritual journey, no matter how you are worshiping with us, no matter what you believe or what you question, what you've done, where you've been, who you love, what hinders or empowers you. With us, may you find welcome and a sanctuary for your soul. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join us in our prayer of confession. Dear God, forgive us the words that we have said which have given pain, and the words we have left unsaid that might have given hope. Forgive us our actions which we have taken that have harmed friend or stranger, and the things undone that could have made a difference. Forgive us our thoughts which poison us and deprecate others, and the thoughtlessness that ignores you. Gentle God, have mercy on us and give us peace. For our mother, father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May God have mercy on you and forgive you through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, I'm Adele. We've been a part of the Charlotte Congregational Church since we moved to the area seven years ago. When I was growing up in Minnesota, faith and our Lutheran church were an important part of my family's life, and I wanted some experience with religious tradition to be a part of our family's life as well. We came to this area when Ben was four, Noah was two, and Oliver had just been born. We were drawn to CCC by our sense of the community here and the spirit, welcoming, creative, musical, devoted to social justice and to supporting one another. We've loved taking part in the church's traditions, from the most spectacular Christmas pageant I've ever seen to the candlelight and bells at the Christmas Eve services. And we've been thrilled for the opportunity to incorporate social justice through kids cook and youth group service efforts into our family's life. We've also been so grateful for this community in difficult times, such as when I needed surgery a few years ago. 
the meal trains from the circle of care, and the support and prayers we had from both Susan and from so many other members of this community worked wonders for me in both practical and spiritual ways. Even when our struggles are more everyday, we know that we continue to be part of a congregation fundamentally grounded in helping one another, caring for one another, and loving one another. I'm so grateful that we and our kids are a part of this community of faith. And now let's join together in singing our opening hymn, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. The words to the hymn will come up on your screen, and I encourage you to sing loudly with a full spirit wherever you are. kids. Hope you had a great Halloween last night. It was fun to see some costumes in Sunday school this morning. So for today's Bible reading, Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. So let's see if we can figure out what that means this morning. Um, unicorn, what do you think it means to be blessed? Um, to be connected to God or, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think to be connected to God is a good way of, of thinking about being blessed. Um, what do you think it means to be a peacemaker? Um, say, like, like if some people are fighting, you can like just say, stop fighting and say, Make them not fight. Yeah, to um, to help people not fight. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, I one thing I think about um, peace peacekeepers sometimes are afraid of fighting, and peacemakers I think aren't afraid of fighting. They just um, they can stay calm and brave. Um, and so we are called, in this Bible passage, Jesus calls us to be peacemakers. So to see a fight and to go in and try and stop it, which is hard, I think. Um, have you ever been a peacemaker? Have you ever stopped an argument or a fight? Yes. You have? What have you done? Uh, like, cat when meal. at school, like, two girls really got in a huge fight. 
and I was like, can you please stop fighting? Because we were just going about to go out to recess. Okay, and did it work? Yeah. Oh, you just asked them kindly and they stopped fighting? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Um, well, again, the passage is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So my last question is, why do you think peacemakers will be called children of God? Do you have any thoughts on that? I don't really know myself. So I'm interested. Um, I wonder what members of our congregation think about that question. Why are peacemakers called children of God? Um, and so if anybody has any ideas on that, maybe you could send me an email. So will you pray with me? Sure. All right, let's bow our heads. Holy God, we know what it feels like to fight. And we know what it feels like to make peace. It feels more connected to you when we make peace. With election coming up, there might be lots of fighting. Help us to be brave peacemakers and remind us that we are called to be peacemakers as your children. Amen. On this All Saints Sunday, we come to a time of prayer and a time of naming the saints. Before we do that, I just want to raise up a couple of prayer concerns from the congregation. Uh, first, I'd like to raise up one from Nat Vanderels, who has a prayer uh, of thanksgiving for the shared experience he's having of helping his daughter with her math homework. Even in a world upside down, he writes, a squared plus B squared still equals C squared. And he gave a smiley face at the end. <laughs> Thank you, Nat. I also want to let the congregation know the sad news that our friend uh, Ruth Bloxma, who was a member of Wake Robin, her daughter was our music director uh, for a few years, and uh, she died this past uh, Thursday, a week ago Thursday. Uh, we put a note in the courier about that, but her family will have uh, a celebration of her life uh, out of state. And But please pray for the Bloxma family and for Julia um, and her whole family in this time. That said, we come to a time of thinking about our saints. The saints who, uh, which is to say all of us, who try to follow Jesus, perfectly or imperfectly, um, and probably imperfectly for all of us, definitely imperfectly for all of us, but still we try. And we give uh, some time this morning and on this All Saints Sunday every year, to raise up the names of the saints, those who have gone before us, who have showed us the way, who have given us a model for life, um, who showed us what to do, sometimes what not to do, but uh, filled us with the richness uh, that we are so grateful for. In this past year, we have had a difficult time gathering for funerals, and certainly in this congregation, we have lost a number of our friends and fellow members, and certainly many of you have in your lives as well. So I think this is a particularly important uh, Sunday and a, a moment in the life of this congregation. And so I invite you to get comfortable, to settle in, to take a deep breath. And after I ring the bell, to enter into a time of prayer and naming of the saints. Let us be together in prayer. Blessed are friends, family, and loved ones who have gone before us. Blessed are we who weep today for what we have lost. Help us to trust in Jesus' promise that our weeping will be joined by our laughing. 
Blessed is God who gave us the saints to guide us, to orient us, to love us, and who we remember and give thanks for today. Hear now the names of those saints who have gone before us. Anne Bolosky. Ruth Bloxma. Robert Borquist. Betty Brocker. Kobe Bryant. Mary Burns. Jean Campbell. Beverly Fournier. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ruth M. Gover. Dottie Hall. Marjorie C. Killing. David Kittredge. Max Lama. Jim Lehrer. Pat Leonard. John Lewis. Marie Lohr. Ronald Kenneth Mills. Susan Meganberg. Karen Newman. Diane Gould Peters. David Pricer. Stuart Seidel. Silas Skiff. Paul Switzer. Sam Titus. Bim Worley. Ellen Wilkins. Pat Willis. With the names of the saints ringing in this sacred place, we give to one and now this gift of silent remembrance. You are welcome to lift up any names of the saints who have died this past year that we failed to mention or who are close to your hearts. Beloved God, we give you thanks for the life of the saints, for who they were to us, who they are to us, and who they will be long into the future. Amen. And now we have come to our time of offering, and I want to give thanks for the great generosity that you have shown to the people of this church congregation and to our wider community, both in this state and throughout the world. And so obviously we're not passing a plate, but we encourage you to get in touch with Karen Spidell, our bookkeeper, if you have any questions about how you best can make donations online. 
You may always use a PayPal account. You can set up a direct deposit from your checking account. Karen's information will appear on your screen, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture is a reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, in which we hear what are known as the Beatitudes, and it starts like this. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak, and he taught them, saying this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. May God bless this reading to our hearing and to our understanding. Blessings. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The title of this sermon is Melancovida. So what if it went like this? Blessed are the eternal optimists, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who rejoice, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the strong and healthy, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for prosperity and success, for they will be filled. Blessed are the powerful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the cunning, for they will see God. Blessed are the warriors, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are the elected victors. The Beatitudes that Karen read are, of course, the flip side of these fictional ones. The real Beatitudes single out the downhearted, the lowly, the sad, meek, poor, persecuted, and reviled. But honestly, sometimes it sure does seem that the powerful and successful have inherited the earth, if not the kingdom of heaven. Success 
and authority are highly venerated in our culture, so much so that it seems our accomplishments, what we do and what we can produce, can matter more than who we are inside. The Beatitudes stand in opposition to this, and they affirm the tender and the vulnerable. And let's face it, right now, a lot of us can identify with the real list. We do feel meek, some poor in spirit, downtrodden and bereft. When it gets dark at five o'clock this afternoon, the winter and not just the night will loom long ahead. Mental health professionals and clergy have been preparing for a very difficult winter as the virus forces us indoors and leaves many people isolated and alone. Already, depression and pandemic fatigue are acknowledged and rising. This is very serious for some people and perhaps a new experience for those generally unfamiliar with lingering malaise and discouragement. A friend of mine calls it PSID, pervasive sense of impending doom. Whatever it is, and whether or not you too feel down more than usual, we all know it's out there, moving through a country and a world beset by a pandemic. I'd like to reframe this and do so with full disclosure that I am not a mental health professional and have no idea how the terms I will use might be clinically defined. The distinction I want to make is between depression and melancholy and the effects each has on our souls. What I think we are experiencing together in a broad and systemic way is melancholy. Unfortunately, far too many people are clinically depressed, but some, some to some degree, we all have a shared sadness, a melancholy. It feels to me as though it's running beneath the crust of the earth, swirling and circling, affecting us in a systemic and kind of elemental way. The virus is still with us. In fact, it's gaining ground and surging. It's clearly not disappearing. It's we, as we retreat into our houses, who seem to be going away. My sense is that when people are depressed, they compound their low caste state with shame on occasion. Have you ever felt this way? Do you think that you should be able to get your act together, that if you were a better person, you do something productive or hopeful or helpful. Of course, this kind of thinking only intensifies the depression and enervates you further. There's an erroneous belief that there's fault in being depressed. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I'd also like to throw out there that I think depression gets a bad rap on occasion. Not all depression is bad. Some depression is entirely appropriate reaction to difficult circumstances. Melancholy differs in my mind, at least in how I'm thinking about it today, as a different kind of sorrow. It tends to be in reaction to external circumstances. It acts upon us and fells our spirits. In this way, there's no shame at all. We're not as ready to blame ourselves, and I think, or think that we're bad people, or at least that we shouldn't be doing this or that. When someone we love dies, though the, there are bound to be regrets, the sorrow we feel is a deep melancholy, and there's a kind of purity to that sadness. Blessed are those who mourn. The pandemic is affecting us all. It comes from without. It robs us at the very least of close companionships and especially as the weather gets colder and we move inside. 
and at worst, it threatens our health and lives. And along the way, it robs some of us of independence and many of livelihoods. It acts upon us, and we are afflicted, if not by COVID-19, then by a shared communal melancholy. I'm calling this affliction melancholia, and would wager there's not a person among us who won't at some point test positive. The symptoms are wide and varied, an inability to get out of bed in the morning, unrelenting insomnia, loneliness, weight gain, boredom, anger, frustration, despair, increased alcohol and drug consumption, a tendency to click send or complete purchase too quickly, a rising dependence on chocolate. All of these actions and feelings are basically a reaction to not being to have, not being able to have or do what we want. Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca aren't, to my knowledge, developing treatments for this widespread and rampant affliction. What I'd like to do is to encourage us to see Melancovida as perhaps an opportunity for growth and a deepening of our relationship with God. To varying degrees, all faith traditions encourage the faithful to, at some point, deny themselves something they want. The most obvious in the Christian tradition is the practice of giving something up for Lent. The goal is that by denying ourselves something we want, our hungers and yearnings churn within us, and then we direct them to God. Think of the common practice of going on a retreat whether for a day or a week or a month, the idea is that by trimming our lives, simplifying them, paring them down, there will be more room for God. The desert fathers and mothers committed their lives to God by removing themselves from the world. The, to greater or lesser degrees, we are all wanting something that we can't have right now. For many, Thanksgiving this year is looking more like a monastic retreat than a joyous celebration. We try to wiggle around the protocols and justify cutting corners here and there, but we know the virus is the best wiggler around, and we sigh and we moan and we lament. What if we saw this time as an opportunity to redirect our energy, our longings, our hungers to God. Not God out there, but the God within. How might you feed the Christ within you? Take all that energy and frustration and direct it not towards all that you can't have, but towards something different. How this plays out will be different for everyone, and the practices you adopt needn't be lofty and deeply spiritual. They can be small and real and tangible. I knit, it's my rosary. It doesn't serve a lot of people, but I think it makes me a nicer person. Our book group, to which you are all invited on Tuesday mornings at 9.30, is committed to learning about the Enneagram this winter and how it might inform their understanding of themselves and those in their lives. Someone told me last week that she's planning on learning French. Another to recommitting to centering prayer. Someone else to practicing his musical instrument more diligently and faithfully. Serving others has long been seen as an antidote to the cravings of addiction. Writing notes, donating to the food shelf, calling someone on the phone all require energy fueled by love. The possibilities are endless. I love to think of something Emily Dickinson said. Not knowing when the dawn will come, I open every door. 
So let's open doors too, not just for ventilation, but for hope. Because strengthened by our shared communal experience, we will emerge together into the spring fortified and I pray resilient, ready to greet one another and the vaccine with thanksgiving. On this All Saints Day, we recall those who have died in the past year, saints and sinners all, people who have succumbed to disease or despair, those who have lived full lives and simply laid their mantle down. In the coming dark times of fall and winter, when you may feel yourself afflicted by melancholia, light a candle to remind yourself of the light they cast and the light of Christ that is burning within you. Kindle that flame, fan it, for light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. You are the light of the world. Blessed are you. Grace and peace. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall never hunger. You who believe in me will never thirst. So the sharing of this meal is an invitation into full communion with Christ. So come to Christ's table wherever you may find it, just as you are to find healing and wholeness for your journey. Let us pray. Holy God, our loving creator, close to us as breathing and distant as the farthest star. We thank you for all that you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life, for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to your will, and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as our Savior. We praise you for Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, and for your calling forth of your church for its mission in the world. Gifted by the presence of your Holy Spirit, we come before you grateful and humbled by your everlasting presence. So come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless the fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes may be opened and we might recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Amen. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks, he blessed it, and he poured it, and he gave it to them, saying, take and drink, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God come for all things are ready. We invite you in your homes, whatever elements you may have, bread, wine, juice, bread, uh, crackers, whatever is convenient, whatever you have, know that it is all part of God's table, that you and the elements are blessed by the God of love. Take, eat, and drink. Thank you. 
Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. And you say to one another, and also with you. And now let's join together in singing our closing hymn, For All the Saints. At the end of this worship service, I have just a few announcements to make. Uh, just as a reminder that we are in uh, the middle of our stewardship campaign, which began a few weeks ago and which we hope to wrap up by November 15th. We hope that this is a rich time for you to be thinking about the, the place where your faith and your giving meet and that uh, you are considering uh, giving a, an estimate of giving or a pledge to show, support the ministries and missions of Sherlock Congregational Church. And we hope that that process for you was joyful and a good one and a growing one. If you have any questions, please reach out to myself or our financial steward, Claudia Marshall, at any time. Also, I want to let you know that uh, the Freedom and Unity Walk that I and a number of other folks from our congregation have been engaging in this past week um, is going well and putting many miles behind us. and. Um, good conversations and raising awareness, helping people to reflect on freedom and unity and that place where our personal freedoms and our responsibility uh, for one another um, meet. Uh, as part of that, our confirmation class will be walking with uh, Hadley and myself today, and we'll meet at 1130 in the church parking lot, and we hope to see the confirmands uh, then and there. And maybe you on the road as well. If so, wave and honk to us as you go by. Lastly, I just want to mention that uh, next Sunday we will be worshiping again by Zoom and uh, YouTube Live, and we hope that you uh, are here to join us uh, for a wonderful worship service with good music and prayer and silence and uh, hopefully exactly what you need.
And now as you go out into your week ahead, may you hold that light that burns within you with a tender love. May you nourish it and kindle it so that you too may shine like a beacon for the world to see. Go in peace. May the blessings of God shine upon you. May God's peace abide in you. May God's presence